I believe that art is about filling places of darkness with light. This sometimes involves actually going into some quite dark places in order to transform that darkness into light. As you see with this image here, this is one of the old abandoned mansions that I have worked with in Beirut. And I floodlit it. So this place, which was decaying, became full of light and illuminated. And I think that art also is about the illumination of something we can't see, but we can feel. And today, I'm going to explore the healing potential of art in dealing with pain and disease. I was commissioned to come to Lebanon in 2006 to paint landscapes for a Lebanese family in London. Some of Lebanon is incredibly beautiful. There are so many beautiful landscapes and such a lot of heritage, so many civilizations there that I was fascinated by. And so I painted the landscapes and also the architecture, the amazing mix of cultures and religions, mostly Christian and Muslim, coming together in a way that they rarely do anywhere else in the world. And this is why Lebanon, in a way, is a great beacon for all of us, really. It's where worlds come together. And if Lebanon works, then, then we can all work. Unfortunately, just after I had visited Lebanon for the first time, it was attacked and bombed in 2006. And I'd only just discovered this, this precious place. It upset me greatly uh, what happened. And so I decided to come back as soon as the war was over to do workshops with children in the damaged areas. I witnessed um, scenes of great resilience and even sort of ridiculous humour in Lebanon, which is a way of coping with uh, this terrible tragedy. And I was very inspired that life goes on. I did a series of workshops in Dahir, which is South Beirut, which was heavily bombed um, in 2006. I worked with children there, encouraging them to draw what they loved about the world, but also draw uh, some of their more traumatic experiences. And it gave them an opportunity to go through something very painful. And I think this is true whether somebody has a disease or whether someone has had a terrible tragedy in their life or they've seen violence and conflicts, that art can really help. I was also commissioned to do portraits by people who also had suffered in that conflict. I was commissioned by this family in a, in a town called Baalbek in, in the Bekar Valley in Lebanon to do a portrait of somebody who had been killed in the war. Now, uh, we come from cultures and countries that may have very different and conflicting political perspectives. But what I was doing with this uh, drawing was really just trying to get through to what joins us together, our common humanity, that this sense of loss is something that we all share. This is the brother of the man who was killed, um, and his family were very, very happy with this portrait. They said that uh, their son will always be alive now. Now, we know that there are two basic types of pain, physical and emotional. And grief is emotional, but it has physical results too. And the two are interconnected. As an artist, I'm primarily concerned with using art to heal from emotional pain, trauma, loss, grief, anger, amnesia. But I do believe it can help with cancer and other diseases. After all, mental disease and depression are forms of cancer and can also be fatal. I have personal experience of this. My mother, who I painted a portrait of here, and more recently my sister, took their own lives. Personally, I find great strength in the healing power of art as a form of meditation uh, to begin healing myself and with any luck, a few other people along the way. And this portrait of my mother, I exhibited in an abandoned, partially renovated house in Beirut, 
because in some ways there was a common connection here, a place of abandonment where there had been a great loss seemed to resonate with, with my mother. And I associated this color of faded pink very much with her. And pink has a very healing quality as a color. There is a particular kind of pink that they even use in prisons because it calms people down. But we'll come on to this aspect of color therapy later. I like this color pink because it was, uh, reminded me of my mother's favorite flowers, uh, sweet pea flowers. And I believe that if you give someone who's suffering from a physical disease uh, a sense of faith in themselves, the hope to carry on, that there is a possible future worth fighting for, then the physical symptoms may decrease. Now, I'm not particularly religious in any one direction, but I do admire St. Paul's description of faith, which is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things unseen. Now, through art and creative expression, children can visualize that better unseen future. Here are some beautiful drawings that were made by children uh, through the Chance Association recently in a workshop that I gave in a, in a beautiful old abandoned hotel in Lebanon. And you can see here how this very talented girl, Allah, drew this lovely flower. And um, Khalid, another artist who is suffering from cancer, drew this amazing picture of the train. The nearby train station is in fact ruined. It doesn't work anymore. It was abandoned in the Civil War. But what he did was imagine the train working again, almost as a symbol of life continuing. This is brilliant work. And here are pictures of uh, the workshops going on, us drawing in this very beautiful place in Lebanon. Dr. Rula pictured here on the right, you may recognize her. Albert Einstein once said that the one thing that scientists and artists have in common is a sense of wonder. If you give this gift to a child suffering from disease, I believe it will significantly improve their chances of getting better. And even if it doesn't, it will give them a sense of dignity and fulfillment in their last days so that their spirits can move on in a happier way to whatever comes next. We don't know. It has also been proved that the display of art in hospitals improves the chance of recovery. And I think that in hospitals, the art made by the children and the people suffering from the diseases that they have, if that art is displayed in the place where they are patients, it'll be even better because they will get some idea that they are worth respecting as artists and it'll give them confidence, give them a sense of hope so it becomes a, a kind of circular reciprocal relationship between them and the art that they make. Now, theoretically, in terms of colour and shape of art, natural and landscape scenes in blue and green tend to make people feel calmer because blue and green technically reaches your eyes at a lower frequency. Whereas on the right, reds and yellows have a very energizing effect. And this can be uplifting, but it can also cause anxiety. So that's worth thinking about when placing art in hospitals. And also landscape shape paintings, such as the one on the left, in very soft, shaded, colors have a relaxing effect on the mind, whereas tall vertical uh, portrait shape pictures are more dynamic and they're better for social spaces, not necessarily places where you sleep, um, but where you talk. Now, talking of beautiful, uplifting places, I'm going to show a short film now which connects beautiful architecture, uh, art and healing for children.
I first came here to paint earlier this year, and I worked here for many months. In fact, I, I rented a house in the village of Salford over the summer so that I could really get to know the place, get to know the local community, and get to know how they felt about the hotel, what they'd like it to be, so that the project was about a sense of community. We thought, let's transform this place into a place of culture and education. Thousands of people came from all over Lebanon and, in fact, the whole world. They were flying in to see the exhibition. And every day I ran workshops for children from the local schools and also children from nearby orphanages and architectural students from Alba, which is the main Beaux-Arts University in Beirut. I chose to teach the children and work with them under the cedar tree which grows in the garden. This tree is the classic symbol of Lebanon, of the beauty of Lebanon, and also the strength and the resilience of the people. I thought it was appropriate to work under it so that the children could feel connected both to their history and also to nature. A place like this is just so inspiring and magical for their imaginations. It's so important to connect children to their heritage so that they feel a sense of belonging to their country and to the land that they live in. We have to think about the kind of Lebanon and world that we want tomorrow, if we really believe in that. We have to improve the lives of disadvantaged children. I feel strongly that these places can have a new life as centers of education and culture, and they fulfill some sort of public role. And I can't think of a better way to do that than by inviting children to come here to learn and to create and to fulfill their dreams. Hopefully, these workshops gave the children a sense of wonder and beauty. I think that this creativity will activate positive thinking in the brain, which will spread around the body, and who knows, maybe do something to reverse the physical or emotional trauma that they are suffering from. It has been proved by the American neuroscientist and lecturer, Dr. Joe Dispenza, that four days of concentrated meditation practice, of which I believe art is a form, does create new neuronal pathways in the brain and even creates new anti-carcinogenic DNA, which fights disease. Another approach which I believe connects emotional and physical pain is the ability to know the pain, to be able to visualize it if you have a way of knowing your pain, developing a relationship with it, you have taken a step on the path to healing it. By drawing it, you are expressing it. You are acknowledging it and also observing it from another angle too, noticing it. And this is an integral part of most meditation practices. This can be done in a purely abstract way, with shapes, lines, and colors, or in a literal figurative way, if you like. To give you an idea of how free you can be, here is an abstract painting about a physical sensation. In this case, not of pain, but of drinking wine. I was thinking about taste, and what does it actually look like when you drink a delicious wine? You can approach a physical pain in your body in a similar way. And if you visualize it through art, 
maybe you can begin to heal it. Perhaps be your own healer. And you don't have to be a patient to do this. As a carer or a doctor, I'm sure that you experience a lot of stress too, and that you can heal from this. As we were hearing earlier today, helping the carers care for people in need. We're going to try some exercises now. You'll find sketchbooks and pastels in front of you. So if you can all open your books and get ready, we're going to try a little exercise. Don't worry if you make a complete mess. There are no mistakes in this business. This is about having a bit of fun and letting your hand go. Now with the first exercise, try pinching your thumb with the nail of your finger and hold it for a few seconds so that you feel the sharp sensation of pain going down your arm. Now hold it. And now release it, and now draw that. What does your pain actually look like? What colour does the feeling have? What shapes? What textures? Now by doing this, you are developing a relationship with your physical pain, which is transformative. Something magical is happening. It is becoming something else. You are opening up creative pathways in your brain, which were previously unused. If you develop it, it could become a beautiful work of art, which could give you a sense of self-worth and also give others a positive sensation. Another physical exercise is to touch your own face with your left hand, providing it's very clean, of course, and draw what you think you look like with your right hand. It's the process which counts. Now here is a self-portrait I did using two mirrors and using thick paint applied with a knife. So in fact, I was looking at the side of my face as I was painting live, which gave me an objective distance from my own physical self. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do the same thing today uh, we haven't got two mirrors here. But what you can do is touch your own faces, providing they are very clean. Now touch your face with your left hand and then try to draw what it feels like with your right hand. Try to draw your own face. And this is a way of getting to know yourself better and perhaps having a bit of a laugh about yourself too. And this way, you are activating a sense of inner coordination, which we don't often use. I'm going to talk a little bit more about healing from emotional stress. Maybe after doing those drawings, you feel a bit stressed, I'm not sure. Art can be a way of relating yourself to your surroundings as well as to yourself and finding meaning in it. I find Lebanon, where I live, a rich source of inspiration because in many ways it is like a national expression of all that is best and worst about humanity and our internal feelings. The scars of conflict are still visible, yet the country has sublime natural beauty and embodies an immense resilience in the face of adversity. Now this is one of my architectural paintings of the city. I painted this recently after my sister died. It's quite clearly not just a painting of buildings. There's a symbolism here, there's a, there's a feeling expressed in the architecture. And this is a way of externalizing and making sense of your internal feelings. Of course, I felt and still feel very sad about what happened to my sister. I felt this sense of kind of ruin inside. 
Beirut is full of neglected and abandoned old buildings, which are threatened by brutal, ugly tower blocks rising in the city. So this, in a way, was symbolic of my sense of loss, my sister's situation, but also about how something delicate, despite being threatened by dark forces, still contains some strength and beauty. So this way, I'm, to some extent, healing myself by channeling the pain uh, into painting. Another painting of architecture in Beirut is this painting of a vision that I have for a famous old abandoned hotel in the middle of the city called the Holiday Inn. And it was a place where there were lots of battles during the Lebanese Civil War in 1975-76. And the building has remained completely empty and forbidden for anyone to enter ever since. And it's now a military base and no one can enter. If the city is like a body, it's like a tumour or, or something unresolved in the middle of the city. I'm developing a concept to hopefully transform it actually into a place of beauty and culture and art. And I had a vision to surround it with flowers and so that the place became symbolic. So this would be like a garden of remembrance and forgiveness. And the flowers uh, that I painted are kind of like the new life that rises up next to the old. And you can still see the, the bullet holes in the concrete of the building above. So hopefully I can do this uh, project one day. But uh, it's very complicated. Where there's a will, there's a way. Another thing that I've done related to this are workshops for Syrian refugee children who, some of you may know, there are a million, million and a, and a half Syrian refugees in Lebanon at the moment. And they've seen terrible things um, in their own country before coming to Lebanon. I showed them pictures, photographs of that painting that I did of the Holiday Inn. And then they interpreted that in their own way memories they have of Aleppo or other places in Syria where they ran away from. Some of the drawings I exhibited at an exhibition in London. And in this way, it meant that their talent uh, was being recognised internationally. And they were transforming their bad memories into something beautiful. And in fact, one girl went drew this picture you see on the left not just flowers growing next to bullet holes, but she drew flowers coming out of bullet holes. So this is a, this is a great symbol and a great story. Because so often we see refugees as, as problems or statistics, but we don't ever recognise that people who've lost their homes are people who have feelings and, and talents, they're talented children. And of course, music as well is a great therapy. I mean, that's a whole other story. I play a bit of jazz trombone, and I took the trombone to, in fact, Palestinian refugee camps. There's, a, there's another refugee community in Lebanon who've been there since 1948 and 1967. We did these music workshops and then transformed some of the sounds of the music into a big drawing. And then we went onto the streets of Beirut and they performed concerts with the drawing as a backdrop to uh, the music. So the art and the music became one and yeah, it was a lovely, lovely time. The last example I'm showing here are paintings of the magnificent cedar tree which is in Sulphur, the old hotel which we saw in the film. These paintings explore a sense of memory through association. The garden in which the tree grows is one of the last places I experienced with my sister. She came to the exhibition and it was also where I taught children from chance association. So I painted these pictures of the silhouette of the tree, the tree of life. And I painted in the green colours that my sister loved on the right and in the soft pinks and blues that my mother loved on the left, 
You may like to think of someone close who you have lost and remember them when you draw. I think it's a very good meditation, almost like a prayer to that person, whether they are still with us or they've moved on to somewhere else. If you'd like to do a drawing of a tree, even if it's just a quick sketch, a very simple picture of the cedar tree. Think of someone that you love or someone maybe who's suffering at the moment with some sort of disease or problem in their life. And as you draw, think of that person and use the colours that you associate with them. I think it's a beautiful way to connect.